Well, from uh, one Volkswagen race to another, Formula Volkswagens, and this is the final, sponsored by Squeeze. And they're on the warm-up laps, and a very interesting situation indeed, because the man you just saw winning that previous race, Eugene Heary, he will be, in fact, on the fourth row of the grid, in 10th fastest position. So there was the result. Niall Young, very unfortunate to uh, lose it at the last minute. But here we are, top runners in this top class. And what a fabulous uh, class this has turned out to be. On pole position, Chris Paul. He's the man who has already uh, clinched the Squeeze Championship. Alongside him will be Polly Gorns. Then we have Paul Healy and a very uh, interesting entry indeed, Pat Daffy on the second row of the grid. More about that later. As you can see, on the warm-up lap, a lot of little work to be done. Got to get the tyres up to working uh, temperature. Got to get the brakes up to working temperature. And somebody who knows all about that is Colin Doherty. Yes, indeed. Uh, it's very easy to uh, <clears throat> to under underestimate the brake problems in these cars. It's uh, They need to be set up properly. So there he is. Uh, that's last second uh, adjustments. Also a bit of psyching goes on at this stage because uh, you've got to be a little bit of aggressive and uh, get the old brain up to speed as well as the cars. Uh, you're really, you're lolling around all day waiting for your race and then suddenly you're strapped into one of these machines and uh, really your whole uh, mental approach, your whole physical approach has to speed up considerably. Got to get those reactions uh, up to lightning pace. It'll be very interesting to see how this car behaves. Number one, uh, driven today by Pat Duffy. Normally the car of Jerry O'Reilly, the guy who won the championship, the squeeze championship last year. But uh, Jerry O'Reilly just recovering now from uh, a road accident, so we, we wish him a good recovery. But Pat Duffy, ex-Formula Ford racer, ex-Formula Ford champion, and it'll be interesting to see how he adapts to this uh, slightly lower uh, single-seater category. To my mind, one of the best uh, single-seater drivers we've had in Ireland over the last decade. So I'll be certainly watching that. But the man on pole position is a very young man. He comes from Lisburn. He's uh, sponsored by Eric Holland, uh, who's a great enthusiast of motorsport. And he's already won the championship. And there he is on pole position in the Shane. Uh, and a very, very successful season he's had. There's number 61, Parik Owens, from me, the farmer, again in a Shane, another... Uh, very sprightly driver indeed. On the second row of the grid, then we're going to have Paul Heavey again in a Shane, and really it is amazing the way the Shane construction uh, company down in uh, Wicklow has really cleaned up. And there's Pat Duffy. Now watch out for that man. Sponsored by Scruples, and he'll have no scruples in using all his skill to get past the rest of the field. David Waters, Johnny Flynn, Gary O'Brien, Brian Hardy, they're all ready to go. Bit of creeping, in fact, by Pat Duffy. Could well be a penalty there, I would think, and that would be a shame. But he certainly was far too quick off the line. He takes the lead, and I think we're going to see the officials give him a penalty as the rest of the field funnel into Telecom. But it's Pat Duffy for the moment to the lead. Well, we'll have to see what happens on that one, uh, Alan, but Pat Duffy certainly seemed to be creeping. He's learned a few lessons uh, from his Formula Ford days. A bit of a wily old fox is Pat from Navan, uh, a farmer, and of course, a neighbour and also a farmer, uh, Jerry O'Reilly, um, and Corey Owens tucking into second place there. Corey Owens second, Chris Paul is in third, and a bad start, a bit of a messy start all round. A lot of confusion. There's number two just going through there, Paul Heavey. And you see them filing down into Subaru Corner, all going through the distinctive shape of the story there. You could easily pick out, but it's Shane's all up front, and it's Pat Duffy now under considerable pressure from Corey Gones. And Chris Paul uh, in third place now, dicing with Corey Gones for second place. He's up alongside him now on the Dunlop straight. Yes, he has taken second place. Chris Paul, very much the find of Formula BW racing this year. Chris Paul, he almost came from nowhere, and uh, he's taken a string of victories, and of course the Squeeze Championship title. So there he is, Chris Paul in second place in the silver car, the man to watch. And I would be very surprised if in fact he wasn't, in fact, really leading the race overall, because Pat Duffy was certainly, would certainly get a 30 second penalty, maybe a minute penalty uh, for that. So the lap record at the moment is held by Chris Paul, uh, young Chris Paul at a 1 minute 2.64 uh, we've already had one lap record today on the sidecars so we'll be keeping a close eye on that time but it'll be very interesting now to see how the experienced Pat Duffy 
pulls off or succeeds in holding off uh, young Chris Paul from Lisburn. Uh, Duffy, he's contemplating a season of Formula VW racing next year, so this is really his first taste of this class. Ten second penalty, so it's not a very heavy penalty, ten seconds, but uh, that would certainly drop him way back uh, out of the top ten anyway at the moment. So the real leader is number 34 there in second place, but he probably doesn't know that, and he certainly doesn't look as if he knows that at the moment. Both in chains, very similar cars, dicing away there, but the real leader is actually the second place man, and that's Irish. <laughs> that's right. Chris Paul, here he is, um, second place on the road, leader of the race, of course, and as I say, very much the Formula BW, the man of, of 1990. Tucking in behind Pat Duffy as they go through the Subaru S's, and Duffy, I think, still getting the feel of this type of car, nowhere near as, as precise as a Formula Ford to drive around this track, Alan. No, indeed, Paul Healy is still in fourth place. In fifth place at the end of that last lap, we had uh, number 30, Brian Harty. Then in sixth place, it was number six, Johnny Flynn. In seventh was number four, David Waters. But uh, it looks now as if Chris Paul not only wants to win this race, but wants to win on the road. And he pulls out in this guy. He's very quick in a straight line. That Duffy, very experienced. Closes the door, keeps that inside line uh, sacrosanct. But uh, one wonders for how long. Well, indeed, one would wonder why Pat Duffy is not getting signals from his pits now to tell him that he has a 10-second penalty. Or, indeed, if those signals are being hung out, I wonder, does he see them? And a tremendous dive going on behind them as well, because there is Paul Jones, and right on his tail, Paul Heavey. And those four definitely pulling away now from the rest of the field. This time, Chris Paul makes a very brave effort down the inside. Haven't seen that done before, but has to get back into line. It's all happening at Subaru at the moment. Then they come through this right-hander, through Mobile Corner, up the straight, into Barham, and this is a place where he could. He shows a dummy on the outside, but he's on the wrong side of the track, really, to do much about it. If he gets out quick here, he will have the inside line down into Telecom, down the Dunlop straight. Tremendous stuff. Incredible stuff, uh, and really, around about this time, Alan, I would expect uh, Pat Duffy to start getting the, uh, the naughty boy flag to tell him that he really doesn't uh, need to fight like this to hold off Chris Paul. Chris Paul is leading this race. Pat Duffy's pitch should be telling him that by now. So uh, Pat Duffy may be getting himself into a little bit of hot water here. Of course, Paul Jones and uh, Paul Heavey taking full advantage. We have a new record. A new record, one minute of 2.55, goes to number two, Paul Heavey, who at the moment is in fourth place. So the pace is hot. The racing is hot, and there is the new lap record holder. You can just see a snatch of him. And there's Pat Duffy. There he is in the FINA car. Well, Paul Heavey lying second in the Squeeze Championship. These are the top four men in the championship, in fact. Chris Paul, Paul Heavey, Dave Waters, and Corey Cones. But uh, here we are, Chris Paul, number 34, the, uh, already confirmed as the winner of the championship. And I'm surprised, really, the, to see Heavey breaking the lap record. The, the, it's so hot and heavy in here. Now trying to go up a place on the outside of Paul Jones, not the place to do it, as indeed is Chris Paul. We have five laps to go, half distance, and what a five laps it promises to be. Heavey's off on the grass. Heavey loses out badly that time. He didn't actually go completely off the circuit, but he's lost the toe. He's possibly out of this one in the meantime. So it's down to three cars now. Well, Chris Paul from Lisburn must be getting very frustrated at this stage. He really feels that he deserves to have a clear lead. He deserves uh, for Duffy to let him through. But uh, the battle for second place is also the battle for second place in the championship, which is between Paul Heavey, Corey Gones, and David Waters. So that partly explains the, uh, the hectic manoeuvres going on behind the leaders. Chris Paul then, steadying down a little bit now. Obviously aware that Corey Gones is benefiting from this dog fight that they're having up to four laps to go when they come down the hill this time. This time he's trying to get that inside line, but uh, Pat Duffy, far too experienced just to hand it away to him. Duffy, who has been a superstar in Formula Ford 1600 and Formula Ford 2000 in the past, really using all that old racecraft that he certainly hasn't forgotten. 
Yes, and uh, as you say, Alan, probably, arguably one of the most gifted drivers we've ever seen racing here in Mondello Park. Pat Duffy, the sort of guy who can go away from uh, racing for a year or even two years and then suddenly come back, get into a strange car that he's never driven before, and he can be right on the pace. Well, there's a car stopped uh, just off the racing line there, so a little bit of a hazard at Budweiser Corner. But Pat Duffy holding on to the lead, Chris Paul still frustratingly stuck in second place on the road, but leading this race. And we may indeed have done uh, Chris Paul a little bit of an injustice there because we see that it is in fact he who got that lap record of 1 minute uh, 02.55, not EV, as we previously announced. But meanwhile, that's getting a lap record when you're being held up like this, which is pretty incredible. Uh, what could he do if he could get a clear track? And once again, he searches for that inside run down the Dunlop Strait. Once again, Pat Duffy blocks uh, it for him. And Paul Heavey has certainly recovered in fourth place there considerably. He's now right back in the toe with four goals. Well, one wonders, Alan, whether uh, Porrick Owens, who's sitting in third place on the road at the moment and second place in the race, is uh, sitting back watching this dice and perhaps he's expecting these two guys to take each other off and he can benefit from both of them. So perhaps a uh, wily tactics there from Owens. Chris Paul probably by this time, and there is a stranded car on the inside there of Budweiser. Chris Paul, Paul probably at this stage will realize uh, that uh, the man who's ahead of him on the road has a 10 second penalty. But he's in an extraordinary situation. If he can't get uh, past that car, he's in very great danger of his pursuers. So uh, really, it's a difficult one for him to judge. Looking around, you see, he's beginning to use the mirrors. That's always not a good sign, actually, for a driver, because it means he's a bit unsettled. He's a very young man, and coming up alongside him now is Porrick Owens. Yes, and he's in the right place. He really made a terrible mistake there, as you say, Alan. Chris Paul becoming obsessed with the action behind him, and uh, Porrick Owens, and indeed Paul Heavey getting stuck in there as well. So Chris Paul definitely in a very, very difficult position now. He's got to keep an eye on Duffy. He's got to keep an eye on what the car's behind him. So it's a no-win situation almost. And so far ahead of the rest are these four that it could well be that Pat Duffy is going to get some kind of a result here. He could possibly uh, be fourth at this race at the end of the day, even with that 10-second penalty. Incidentally, don't worry about all that smoke coming out of the back of the DWs. That's pretty normal. Uh, they smoke away happily for 10 or 12 laps, usually without anything more terminal happening to them. Yes, most of these cars, uh, they're all running with uh, Volkswagen Beetle engines, air-cooled engines, and most of the cars built by Shane, uh, David Shane in, in Wicklow. And uh, that's been a great success story. David Shane has managed to export eight of these cars to the UK. Well, Chris Paul now, really, he's not giving up. He's really getting very, very frustrated here. Last lap to go, and what a cracker. And you just saw a manoeuvre up there at Barham that uh, was one of the most dangerous manoeuvres in motor racing when single-seater, when their wheels intertwine. Now, Chris Paul, is he going to do it on this lap, or is he going to be content to uh, shadow the black car and yet win this race? Can the pursuers behind him outfox him as they go out into the country for the last time? Well, if Pat Duffy is contemplating a season of Formula BW racing next year, I don't think he's winning many friends here today. Chris Paul, I suspect, may want to have some words with him after this race, Alan. Chris Paul then for the last time, again I repeat, the second of these cars, number 34, heading towards the checkered flag, Pat Duffy, who's led on the road from the start, has a 10 second penalty, so Chris Paul trying his last attempt to get through, and my goodness, that was the closest uh, one yet, now the last corner to go, and Heavey's having to go on the inside, they're ricocheting across the road as they come through. And again, Chris Paul actually touched there by uh, Porrick Owens' car, so Chris Paul taking extraordinary risks, but winning the race. Chris Paul wins it. And in fact, Heavey it was who gets second place in that whole manoeuvre, and Porrick Owens third due to that little tap. So there's the winner. Rob Lisbon, he's won the Squeeze Championship, he's won the big race here today, uh, he's won his place on the Dunlop stage for the Night of Champions, he must be 